Shane Valentino, you did the production design for the trial of the Chicago Seven. Uh, how familiar were you with the trial and the story before you joined? I was I was pretty familiar actually. Um, I when I was in college, I, I studied it, uh, so I, I was uh, very much aware of that that uh, that particular period as well as the specifics of the events leading to the trial, and then the players involved, and then coincidentally. I went to high school with uh, Brett Morgan, who did the animated ser animated uh, version called the uh, Trial of the Chicago Ten. So you know, just, you know, and it, so I, I had a lot of different kind of um, uh, moments with that time period. Mm -hmm. uh, what kind of conversations did you have with Aaron Sorkin about the look for it? Very little. Very little. <laughs> you just let me do whatever you wanted. <laughs> <laughs> like Aaron, what he wanted. Well, I mean, it was Aaron's second film, so it's like you know. I think he's he's obviously clearly a uh, gifted writer and has been you know uh, what he's been known for for so long. And um, I think the with this project in, in particular, you know, I think that the his main his main feedback was around the actual courtroom itself. Um, the original courtroom was was uh, designed by Mies van Roo and the international style um, uh, in the federal building in Chicago. And the the look was not quite what he was going for. I think he was looking, he wanted to sort of, it's interesting because I think he was just coming off of doing To Kill a Mockingbird and seeing sort of those traditional uh, courtrooms with a lot of the wood tones and was sort of leaning very much informed by that kind of aesthetic. And so I pushed to try and do it uh, in the um, the original way, but I think what we ended up doing was was going back to that sort of traditional courtroom space because I think it kind of it falls into everyone's kind of imaginary about what a courtroom looks like. And so it kind of it 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 worked, especially in in, in counter to the countercultural movement that was happening in the different groups and what they represented about anti anti establishment or at least a challenging of the status quo mm -hmm. so it, so we ended up in that space and i think it it worked you know, yeah but, and one thing i noticed was that it's probably one of the bigger courtrooms i've seen in a film uh, it's like it's very grand has like these tall windows and chandeliers and paintings on the walls and there's spacing for like everything that seemed because you know there's so many of them the defendants so uh how did you like find the space and like structure the design well it's a good question i mean i think uh, the interesting part about it is that we uh the original thought was to actually build the the courtroom on stage and um for uh economic reasons, we we ended up trying to find a space that could sort of ha handle the size of the courtroom. And we landed in Patterson, New Jersey in a, at a church. And we basically transformed a church into the courtroom. And, you know, for all intents and purposes, I mean, it's it's it serves in the same kind of form, right? I mean, it's a space of oration. And, you know, often, especially with the, the nature of this trial, as well as Aaron's um, uh, dialogue and um, the banter between uh, characters that it you need it, it that also kind of fit and then you know I think that for me uh, I was also uh, really attracted to that space because of the scale the scale to me was that it was really important it had to feel like these eight defendants were sort of up against something that was much bigger than them and um, uh, also to see how that space in and of itself could be uh, have many different layers of historicity to it. So you have like the paintings and the different mythologies that are going with it. And I had sort of like a, a Greek, Roman and Judeo-Christian uh, murals on the top. And then we have the judges, former judges lining the walls on, on the left and right side and the imposing windows on the left. Um, and so I think that that did create this kind of uh, environment that was very different from when we first meet them. And mm -hmm. so that was the, the importance of that. So what did you have to change to the church? Uh, well, I plugged, um, you know, because of the actual uh, 
so we had windows on both left and right side and I ended up plugging um, the right side windows, um, making it uh, um, uh, so that it would line up a little bit more with what we see as the exterior of the courtroom. Uh, you don't necessarily see that kind of standalone courtroom in a, in a, in a city that size. Um, and uh, we had to do a tremendous amount of abatement. Um, there was no, the floors were, had to be redone. Uh, we clad all the wi uh, the walls with, with paneling, brought in all these huge chandeliers, and the side in which the judge uh, presides is was the gallery. So we plugged that side, and that's where we put the murals. So, wow. oh, yeah, awesome. but <laughs> a lot of stuff. Huh? <laughs> yeah, I mean, and, and also very a very short amount of time to turn around. Yeah, you know, so. Well, even though the, the courtroom wasn't the same as the original, how accurate did you want to be in recreating the other spaces, like the houses and like their headquarters? Oh, very much so. I mean, I, I mean that's really important to me. Uh, it wasn't really that important to Aaron. Not, I'm not, you know, I think Aaron's perspective, and he'll say this, is that he, he wasn't making a documentary. But I think, you know, if you ask any other designer, I think it's 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 important to sort of know the spaces in which these historical figures lived in and then sort of um, start from that place and then, you know, gather as much imagery or references as you can and then curate it down to what you, you think is the best decision that worked for that particular scene or those particular characters at that moment. And I... Um, I tried in every other environment to get it as as close to the uh, the real spaces. Mm -hmm. What did the riot scenes entail? I assume that was on location. That was on location. We shot um, we shot nine days in Chicago, and we shot for the exterior scenes mostly, and um, twenty six, twenty seven days in New Jersey for the interiors mostly, and. Um, we shot in Grant Park where a lot of, there were two, there's two parks in Chicago that were significant during that time um, in the anti-Vietnam War protests that were happening. And there was Lincoln Park and Grant Park and we ended up shooting our scenes in Grant Park. Hmm. So when you have a scene like a protest that's outdoors, how do you like determine the correct space to situate it? Like, is it like around something like, you know, there's the statue in, in one of them. So do you use that as like a focal point of where you want uh, the main action to be? That in particular, because it's an iconic photograph, like that, the, that, that particular statue that's across from the Hilton Hotel where all the delegates were staying uh, during 1968, um, where it was, over, was overtaken by the demonstrators and, um, created a, another level of, of conflict between the uh, police as and protesters. And so for me, it was also trying to like find a place where we could also situate our introduction to the protesters in, in the park environment. So like there's a scene, I think, when Abby Hoffman is sort of giving instructions in his yippy yellow helmet, and you can see a band shell in the background. It was supposed to ground the, uh, the idea for me was to ground them in the actual park itself because that was where they occupied and often stayed, um, and began the conflict with the police because they didn't want to have them staying over 10 p.m. the curfew time. So the so the antagonism had started, you know, around in those kinds of spaces. Um, so to me, it just became, you know, logist, a, a sort of a pragmatic choice, but as well as, you know, trying to stay close to the the events that absolutely happened in 1968. Mm -hmm. Was the bandshell already there in the park? No, we had to, we built the bandshell. Yeah, the the original one, um, which is, was beautiful, was built in the 1930s, had been um, torn down and was. Uh, no longer in use and, and the design was uh, a, a bit different than what we landed on for for the film but I you know enough to say that I had enough of the sort of art deco influence mm -hmm. in the staging that kind of could, you know we could get there so mm -hmm. uh, there are some flashbacks to them marching through the streets so what was it like transforming the streets back to 1968 it's fun I mean I, I mean it's a challenge as I think any designer would say it's like the modernization of streets, is significant. I mean, you have a lot of large buildings that kind of help sh 
that stand as the bone of the of the um, of the environment. But then you have you know lamps, street lamps that have changed. A lot of like uh, you know in that particular scene when they're going down Michigan Avenue, you know there, there's an island in the middle of of uh, the of the street now it didn't exist in 1968. So we you know you have to come up with this with with some strategies of blocking to try to obscure those kinds of things. Um, but I think it's a challenge and I think it's, it's, it's fun to try and one, look at the reference material and then see what the given situation is and, and then try and see what's the best way we can kind of, kind of shoot it without relying so heavily on visual effects. You know, I mean, we still do, but I think it's nice to try and problem solve in camera as much as you can. Yeah. Well, like you said, Aaron is legendary for his words, and obviously there's a lot of talking in a courtroom yeah. drama. So, uh, yeah. you keep that in mind when you're designing, like something like this? Well, it, I think it was in the back of my head. I mean, I it's um, I think that you learn very quickly, as, and I think a lot of the other production designers on this panel would say, it's like you learn in a lot when you first start location scouting with the director, because you could sort of see how they're sort of imagining the how the scene is getting played out. Um, and so I learned with with Aaron as I was introducing my ideas about where where what what's where we should shoot certain certain scenes or sets, um, how the the cadence of his words, he would really recite the words as he was walking through the space. And that, I think it was a good indicator for him whether or not that space could work. Um, and a lot, you know, and, and every director is different. You know, it's like some, they, that's not in their forefront of their minds. But I think um, specifically with this, like, I think he gave what was really empowering for me is that he gave me a lot of control and influence on the look of it. And he was really more, info, it, it was really important to him a lot of times to see that the space worked for the delivery, you know. Oh, Shane, thanks so much for your time. It was great speaking with you. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Nice speaking with you.